Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Hicks. I'll be facilitating today's session. Thank you for joining us for this session for supervisors migrating from paper to an online platform for SHRA employees performance management cycle 2020 to 2021. I'm thrilled to introduce our speakers, Angela Revels, Assistant Vice Chancellor of Human Resources, and Nicolette Campos, Director of Workforce Development and Employee Relations. I'll be monitoring the chat so that if there are any questions or comments, I'll make sure those are noted. And then I'll facilitate some Q&A at the end of the presentation that Angela and Nicolette give today. So again, thanks for joining us. I'm going to turn it on over to our presenters. Good afternoon, thank you, Scott. We're excited that you took some time out of your busy, busy schedules to join us today. Of course, the main focus of this presentation is the new online performance management system, but we do also want to intersperse some information on some effective strategies for creating a performance evaluation. It is a year long cycle, and so we'd like to give you some strategies to help ease the year, uh, give you some ideas as to conversations you can have with your employees to, to have them assist you to have their input in this, um, in this evaluation so that it's useful to you in terms of your business need, but it's also useful to them as employees in their own professional development. Um, as you're well aware, part of the supervisor role is to ensure effective management of the work unit. So of course, this includes making sure that your business needs are taken care of and that there's a business continuity plan. So for me, that was a, a fairly new concept. Um, so I'd like to look over to Angela here and ask her to just give us a little bit of information about what the business continuity plan is and some strategies to ensure that we have an effective one. Thank you, Nicolette. Thank you everyone for joining us. It is um, kind of a nice change to talk about something besides COVID, even though sometimes we still cringe when we hear performance management. But as Nicolette, Dr. Campos mentioned, it's a um, system from the University of North Carolina system and the Office of State Human Resources mandate for us to complete SHRA performance management um, programs. And so for business, business continuity, many times we ask our leadership and maybe a direct supervisor to ensure that they're working together within their departments, within um, setting that message or that tone or that culture for their work unit, for their department and their division. And so when you um, initiate um, a performance appraisal process, beginning from when I'm employed and what that expectation is, through a check-in, what we kind of will call a midterm or mid-year review, and then a final or an annual. And so you'll look back at a 12-month period and assess the expectation, was it met, inspect what you expect, and then give an overall review. So that's kind of how it all works together. Many times, divisional leaders will work with their direct report to their departmental leaders to understand for our division, here is our mission, and how does that play into the mission of the institution? And then departmentally, how your employees impact that mission and are successful through the performance management program. And I think that's a really good point, Angela. It's, a, it's always a good idea to talk with your employees and make sure that they understand how their role um, aligns with UNCP strategic plan, uh, your individual uh, goals and mission for your department, again, as it aligns with the, the strategic plan. So sometimes we kind of um, assume, if you will, that our employees are aware of these connections and are aware of what the alignment is, but that's not necessarily so. So I think that's a really good topic of discussion that you can have with your employees. And of course, if you're a new supervisor to UNCP, we'd be happy to meet with you one on one to discuss your particular department, your particular employees and your own development as well. So certainly feel free to, to reach out to either one of us and we're happy to help. And so some of these um, effective strategies, like we said, we, we want to make sure that we've got the uh, business continuity plan. We want to make sure that you 
have that connection with your employee and the alignment to the mission, but we want to also make sure that your employee is working towards their goal and their vision. So also having that conversation about, you know, where does your employee want to be? You know, next year, two years, five years, 10 years, of course, you'll, you'll have that conversation based upon where they are in, in their career. If you've been here a while and so has your employee, you may already have um, knowledge of, of what it is that they want to do, but you may not have talked about the specifics. So if we're talking about professional development, there may be professional development geared towards your business need, but then also professional development um, for your employee, um, what he or she um, would, would like as well. And so when we conducted the uh, Braves Book initiative number five, we actually deployed a survey to the campus to find out or to ask what, what they would like. So we asked employees, what do you need as a supervisor? What do your employees need? And then vice versa, we asked your, your employees, what do you need as an employee and what do you think your supervisors need? So we had some information um, regarding supervisors and leadership programs, but we were also, I was a little bit surprised at how many actually wanted some, what some people would call basic. So Excel, Office 365, um, how to use Qualtrics. So those um, online SharePoint, all of those kinds of programs. So I think it's really important for you to talk with your employees and ensure that um, they have what they need in order to be successful. So you also want to make sure that you perform some cross training as well. I think that's imperative for business continuity. Um, I know with myself, my backup, if you will, my, my partner in crime is Sheila Hardy. And so we want to make sure that if I'm out of the office, nothing just comes to a grinding halt because Nicolette's not here. And the same with, with Sheila, although you know, I certainly won't be able to perform workers comp, for example, if somebody puts in a claim, I certainly won't be anywhere near as proficient as she is, but at least I need a working understanding as to how she performs her duties, what the process is, what the steps are. So having those discussions as well. Angela, do you have any other strategies or thoughts regarding cross-training? It is a great, great tool that you should implement if you haven't immediately, because life will happen. COVID has happened. There are other challenges that come into play and someone, one of your teammates may be out of the office. And as Dr. Campos mentioned, we can't stop. We've got to continue uh, moving forward. So one of the opportunities that we've uh, taken advantage of during this unprecedented time is creating and establishing um, SOPs. So some standard operating procedures, if you haven't uh, could have something like that, a desk manual or a template or how to for employees in your department. Um, I, I encourage you to go ahead and take advantage of that. Get your employees involved in that. Set that as a goal, for example, for this cycle. If you haven't started, we're not confessing to Nicolette. We, we've already started, right? And so if you haven't done that, that can be a great goal. Set an, uh, an SOP for every tool, I mean, every um, task, duty, responsibility that your team's responsible for and ensure if anyone wins the lottery or experiences another life challenge that your work, your flow isn't interrupted because that will happen. So SRP, SOPs are a great strategy. Um, when Dr. Campos was speaking about the goals, individual goals and institutional goals, and she'll get into that, but the professional development is very important and employees want that. Um, sometimes that is the investment when there's not an actual cash salary compensation increase, but I invest in your future. So you can utilize the Skillsoft, the learning management system. Um, there are other professional organizations we're, we're participating with, for example, Coupa. And if employees research and identify a professional development opportunity, strongly encourage them to add that to their performance cycle. You can add that and say, you know, over this cycle, I want you to complete, you know, whatever that professional development is. Many of us um, have some challenges with presenting, but it's required in our role. So presentation skills, sharpening that, collaboration, whatever any of those tools might be professionally, 
the, I, I would encourage you also to make that part of their um, goals or annual review process. Wonderful, thank you. And so I'm having some difficulties moving my PowerPoint forward. There we go. So um, Angela did mention briefly that this was, was a requirement, but um, we know we always like to look at the advantages when we're moving to um, a new platform, a new pro process. So just to kind of outline for you, you know, thinking about moving from paper to this online platform, you know, hopefully the idea of this is to improve efficiency for you. We know everybody's really busy, and so making something a little easier, a little bit more efficient and effective, I think is always useful. Also, making sure that you can keep track of everything. So it'll be right there at your fingertips, log in, you'll be able to access at any time throughout the year. Information uh, that's easy to retrieve. Again, I know with my desk, I have way too many papers. I need to be a little bit more electronic than I already am. And uh, stop killing those trees. It's uh, something that we need to be aware of and to, to be good stewards. Go ahead. So I was going to just add what normally happens that we hope that this kind of electronic, this e-process will eliminate um, a month during or the month that the reviews are due, then everyone wants a copy from last year or can you send me X? And with this opportunity, you can log in, you can keep up with all of your employees, your interims, your, your you know, work plans, anything that you've issued is at your fingertips, you log in, um, you may have some of us had 10 people, some had two people. So that ease of being able to retrieve and you don't have to wait for HR to print a, a copy and send it to you through snail mail. You'll be able to log right in and see your employees. And actually, I'm glad that Angela mentioned that because um, in terms of the cycle, the, there are currently different cycles for our employees. So the SHRA cycle typically runs April 1st through March 31st. Of course, this year due to COVID, uh, we were given an extension by the state so that the cycle moved to the same cycle as EHRA employees, which is July 1st through June 31st each year. So one of the ensuing discussions I'd like to have after this presentation and in the, the next few weeks is to reach out to you to see if you would like to have those two cycles aligned. So we would not be able to make any changes with the SHRA cycle. Again, typically that will run April 1st through March 31st but we may be able to make changes to the EHRA cycle. So I'll be reaching out to you shortly to learn what, what you would like, if it's something that you would like everyone put together, or it may be, particularly if you have numerous employees, it may be preferential in order for you to do your time management and get everything in on time. It may be preferential to have those two differently. So uh, again, I'll reach out to you. With the change with the um, with the SHRA employees, of course, this means now that we will have a shorter cycle coming up. So here we are in September, but we still only have until March 31st for SHRA employees. So we want to make sure that we assist you with your with your work plan. We'll get those completed hopefully this month, maybe only into the first week of October, maybe, um, and then we can we can look at the mid year with you. So uh, I do want to remind you that this is being recorded so that then you'll have access to this. And so we know if you're like me, um, step by step, after a while, if I'm not using it on a regular basis, I'm going to forget. So you will have access. But this is the login screen that we use. And you just put in your uh, credentials. If you have any issues with your credentials, just reach out to us and we can certainly assist. And so when you hit the login, because we know you won't have any difficulties as I do, this is the screen that you'll, you'll reach. So this is the landing page. So you'll notice to the right, there is a drop down that says user group. In this box currently, it says security, but if you are checking your own evaluations, you would do the drop down to employee. If you're completing as a supervisor, you drop down to hiring official. Then you would move over to the left hand side. You'll see three blue dots. Click on those and the drop down will give you an employee portal. So go ahead and the next step will be to click on the employee portal and that will bring you to this page. And luckily the system is pretty intuitive and we encourage you to take some time kind of looking around, familiarizing yourself um, with, with all the tabs and with all the, all the links. 
Again, if you've only got one or two employees, it's pretty quick to navigate, but it can look very busy if you have multiple employees. So certainly don't, don't hesitate to, to jump on in. So you'll notice here with the blue arrow that there's a home tab. And so there's a number there. So you may have a one, you may have a, a 30. So that's how many items that you have currently to complete. Those are available to you. So once you've looked there, you'll look to the left side, you'll see two links. One is my reviews and the other one is my employees re reviews. So just as you might imagine, my reviews is if you want to check your own evaluation, that would, you would click on that. But if you're about to go in and create a work plan for your employees, click on my employees review. You'll also see that there's going to be a list of action items right now because we only have one. It's not very busy, but again, you may, you may have 10 um, action items. So this is a link and you can click on it to go ahead and create your cycle. There's a description of what's needed. So for this particular example, of course, you're ready to create your performance plan. It's due in about a month and it's upcoming. So, you know, as soon as you click on this page, you know that you have some action items that you need to attend to. So we have test user Ben Simmons. We want to thank Ben for, for create, creating this. Um, so with this, then you want to look and make sure that you are logged in as yourself. And then you'll look here before we get started, there are four components. So your actual overall evaluation consists of 50% institutional goals, 50% individual goals, and then there's also an area for talent development, and then you'll finish up. We are currently working on the performance plan. Some people refer to this as the work plan. And then here's the timeline. So as you'll see, we want to have that talent conversation. You want to go ahead and meet with your employees to figure out what it is that they would like to be working on, as well as any projects that you have that's needed for your, your area or your department. So just making sure the communication lines are open. And so you probably want to have some pre-conversation before you start typing. So you'll notice on this page that there's the planning, there's an off-cycle review. We'll talk about that in just a moment. There's the mid-cycle review, which is now required, and then another off-cycle review. So we like to talk about our, and I'll use a, an Angela term, our rock stars, who are awesome individuals. They need little guidance, little supervision. And so you could probably just go straight from your initial conversation and performance plan or work plan jump to the mid-year cycle, just use that as a, as a spot check and make sure everything's on task. So for example, if you, if you don't complete the mid-year review, you may end up at the end of the year looking at your work plan and realizing, oh my goodness, you know, Nicolette was not able to perform this professional development. And now because it's, it's locked into her performance plan, I'm going to have to give her a does not meet. So at the very least, you want to use this mid-year review just to, to spot check we're on, we're on track. Also, you want to make sure maybe your business need uh, mm -hmm. has changed. Maybe there's an additional project that you were given and there's a portion for your employee. So you want to add it to the work plan. Just be aware with how this platform is set up that once you've, you've completed the mid-year review, it's locked in and you cannot make any changes. If, however, something happens such as COVID, what you can do is you get to the end of your evaluation is you can upload a Word document so you can document any changes there. But I just wanted to take a moment to talk about those off cycle reviews and Angela probably has some, some more guidance or um, examples as to, you know, those times, what kinds of situations we may want to do a review in between the beginning and the mid year review or in between that mid year review and final evaluation. Sure, a couple of comments. Um, it may appear like this is a lot, Nicolette. Why are you giving me all this stuff? But the thing that I say over and over that is helpful is when you get to the end, it should not be a surprise to your employee. So if you've had these touch points or if you've had these check-ins um, when they're employed or when they take on a new role, then you've got this work plan or you've got this initial discussion 
and then you check in, you know, five, six months into it, and you've kind of got a mid-cycle. And so then by the end of the cycle, there's no surprises. If employees are surprised with either any rating or their overall rating, then we as leaders, we haven't done a great job in during the period of checking in, coaching, inspecting, offering, what can we help you do, those kind of things. Another example for um, when something may change, um, you could have had an internal promotion within your work unit and someone's getting a new role. And so you might have to do something different. I still think that you would want to document some type of expectation. It may not be a mid cycle review, but at the end or the final that you've had an opportunity to say they're in this new role for four months. They've been in another role for six months. You're still their leader, for example, and so you want to give an overall check for both roles. That's one example. Someone could um, get some employees moved under their direct leadership. So they've inherited a new task, a new supervisory responsibility. So that's another example of, of something unique or something different that happened during the course of the cycle. Wonderful. And then as you're completing each page, you want to always ensure, if you'll look to the bottom, that you save the draft, and then you can move on to the next page. And I'm having some more technical difficulties. So, so while she, while Dr. Campos is advancing here, um, this, you know, the performance management process has been around forever and a day. And so many times we have different types of biases, for example. And so you don't want to become a bias to, I'm just doing it because I have to, HR tells me I have to, and I'm just going to rubber stamp, give someone a meets, and, and not really impact their professional development and their contributions um, to the university and the success of the university. Another rate of bias is, you know, everybody's exceeding because uh, there is some kind of monetary award tied to an exceed, for example. So I know that the employee is not exceeding. They may be meeting, but they're compensated poorly, and I want to be able to ensure they get any money if it's tied to an SHRA performance. So that's another rate or bias. So, you know, we kind of put all of that to the side and just us as leaders, as great managers, our employees deserve a review and deserve some feedback, positive uh, developmental feedback, and keep them motivated to ensure they're giving their all during the course of the cycle. Thank you. And so, we, as I mentioned, the, the overall evaluation, 50% of the evaluation will come from institutional goals and 50% will come from individual goals. So we want to make sure that when you're rating each of those goals, it adds up to a total of 50 and the minimum score that you can give or the minimum rating that you can give is a 5. So here we have the institutional goals. These are probably goals that you're quite familiar with. Um, they're the same goals that were on your paper forms as well. So the example for the first one is expertise. And of course, then we give a description. So you don't have to go from memory or look for a piece of paper, it's right here. And so you're able to read through, think about how your business need relates to this particular goal, and then you can assign a weight. So typically, there are actually six components to this category, but the sixth one is a supervision or supervisory goal. If your employee is not a supervisor, what we're finding is that most people just go ahead and put 10 for each category to add up to the 50%. Uh, but certainly, if your employee is uh, a supervisor, then you'll need to rework that. Or if you look at your business need and there's one area that really um, does impact your, your department more than others, certainly give it a larger weighting. So 
So second, we have accountability. And again, we have the description so that you're, you're fully aware of what we mean by this and then assigning a weight. Next is customer oriented. And again, we're using the average of 10% for each area. Team oriented, again, 10%. Compliance and integrity. And again, I realize I'm sort of speeding through these, but you'll have this reporting available to you. And of course, you can access um, all of your employees' work plans right away. And 10% here. And this is where we have supervision. So if you have an employee that is not a supervisor, your options are to either just go ahead and put a zero in there as a weight, or you can actually remove the entry. Always make sure as you're going through, as soon as you see this bottom right page where it says save a draft, do make sure that you save a draft before moving on to the next category. So the next area is individual goals. So again, you want to make sure that you've already thought about when you meet with your employee, you've already thought about what you need from that employee. Um, if you're new to the university or your employee is new, this will be a conversation to so together you can learn about what the individual goals are, again, related to business need and individual need. So you want to ensure that you have three to five individual goals. So for example, perhaps you want the employee to improve efficiency. So what do we mean by this? And we've left this still fairly general and maybe Angela can give us some advice as to more detailed information we could put in this box. But we want the, this particular employee to be uh, to have some improvements in efficiency. So for example, perhaps that person has some difficulty reporting to work at 8 a.m. So we want to make sure that the, the employee is going to be doing that throughout the cycle, barring any emergencies. Now, being a better team player, what might we mean by that? Angela, do you have any other examples for imp improving efficiency? So team dynamics and efficiency, you know, we share with each other. If one of us fail, we all fail. If one of us succeeds, we all succeed. And so we can, we as leaders, we're aware, we can observe what's going on in our department, where those dynamics may be challenged. Um, one example of team would be a, a major project for your department and everyone participates or each of your employees has a portion a responsibility of it for the entire goal to be successful. And so those team dynamics, you can assess employees and say that you know that, you know, Nicolette works better independently. Angela is the team cheerleader. How are you going to get those two dynamics or those two personalities, you know, working as a team and sharing a part of the pie, sharing a part of the responsibility to ensuring, you know, we know, for example, this task is due every October of every year. It falls under Nicolette's responsibility. However, Angela, what can she be responsible for, or he be responsible to help support that goal? So those team dynamics could be easily identified. And on the flip side, you could have responsibilities that you need people to work independently. So even though they're part of the department, the team dynamics and the goals for the department, but independently, Here's your strengths or your weaknesses. Not sure if that's a, it's a, a great example, but that's a, kind of one I've observed for team dynamics. And so we decided that based on our, our business need and the other goals that we're going to implement, we're going to assign 15% to this uh, particular category. And then you'll notice that you can just add an entry, just simply push the button and you can add an entry. So here we are at the next page. We still have the improved uh, efficiency here. And then now we're going to have another goal of project management. But of course, you're going to name the specific project. We're being very general here. So you want to make sure that the, the project has a name. And within the description, you want to input some, some time frame. So of course, the deadline for project one apparently is November the 21st. And for the second one, March the 8th. But perhaps you want to consider some milestones, especially if you're new to the employee or the, the employee's new to the university and you don't know how well they work. So as Angela said, maybe your employee's a, a great independent um, worker in terms of um, self-management and will go ahead and implement milestones themselves. 
But it's always a good idea, I think, to, to add some milestones, do some spot checks, make sure everything's okay. Because even your, your strongest employee may just need a little bit of assistance, a little bit of encouragement. You know, um, just as, as we're all extremely busy, so are, are our employees. So you want to just take time to check in and just sometimes just say, you know, great job. I know you're coming up on one of your milestones. How's it going? Is there, is there anything that you need? Anything I can assist with? Um, those, those kinds of things. Just making sure that, you know, you, like Angela said a few minutes ago, you, you check in with your employees and be very specific, I think, in, in these goals. Angela, do you have anything to add? So on the screen, Nicolette's displaying an individual goal, and, and this is just for the exercise, improve efficiency. And then another goal, project management. So to me, one is more of my skills, my competencies, uh, my behavior, perhaps, and the other, the project management are specific, you know, hard deadlines, tasks associated with that. So when you're putting the goal together, be very descriptive. Um, the project management seems to be an easier goal because it's defined, here's the name of it, here's the expectation, here's the due date. When I am asking an employee to, you know, be a better team player, and this is just for an example, you know, we want to be more specific and, and what does that mean for you and your unit or your department, your division. Um, another example, you know, uh, my pet peeve is attendance and we're expected to be uh, uh, at the workplace at a certain time and end of a certain time, but we can observe life challenges and unless someone is responsible for unlocking the door and greeting the very first student, could you be flexible with allowing someone to have a different schedule, 8.15 to 5.15, 8.30 to 5.30, 7.30 to 4.30? So when you're doing kind of those specific goals that are, you know, more behavioral driven, just ensure you're being pretty dis descriptive about the expectation. Um, another example could be, you know, you don't engage enough. Well, what does that mean? And be more descriptive about the expectation engagement equals visit someone's department five times a month. Well, that's how descriptive. So at the end of the session, at the end of the cycle, the employee is like, well, I didn't know what that meant. And the whole year's passed and there wasn't an engagement. So I just wanted to share that example too. Exactly. I think that's a, a really good point. And, and if you realize after you complete this and you're talking with your employee, again, you could always add to it. So if in that discussion you realize that your expectation and understanding of something on the work plan is a little different to your employee's understanding, certainly go in and make some um, edits to that. That would be great. And as you can see in this example, we just went ahead and gave them both a 15% weight. But for you, it may be that the, the projects actually, you know, maybe need a, a fairly significant amount. So just just use your judgment on those, and then we, we're going to go ahead and add another entry, but before we do anything else, we're going to make sure we save that draft. So we want to talk a little bit about development and having a talent development plan. It's really important, to, as you well know, for your business need, but for also making sure that our employees are, are getting what they need in order to be the best employees that they can for you, but then also looking ahead. I know it's really difficult to consider that you've got this great employee and oh my goodness, they may go somewhere else, even within the university. That's a difficult thought, but we really need to make sure that, that we're, we're being good stewards of our time of your employees, making sure that they have everything that they need as well. So of course, now I'm going to do a quick plug for Skillsoft. We have the uh, Skillsoft modules and I know that you're aware of them, you know, mainly due to Brace Kickoff. But it is a huge library of over 40,000 titles. So if you have some time, just when you have five or 10 minutes, you don't have to sit there for hours and hours, but just kind of peruse through, especially once you've spoken to your employee uh, to learn more about what, what they want and what they need in order to be a better employee for you. So spend some time. So there are some things that are specific to skills in terms of uh, what we would think of basic skills for for business, so again, going back to the survey and looking at the modules, we do have modules on areas or topics such as Excel and Microsoft. But then we also have some great modules on leadership. 
So there's, there's a wide, wide variety to choose from. So make sure that you, you include this within your, your work plan and development. And also, I would certainly say and recommend, you know, put those race kickoff modules in there. Make it, as, I, as I've said over and over again outside of presentations, you know, make it worth something. You know, we want, if, if we're mandating it and saying it's really important and it's required, it's because there's some great information there. But I think also your employees should get some credit for that. So certainly adding it to the, the talent development plan. And what's really great about the Skillsoft platform is um, you can actually pull off a transcript. There's a button that you can click. And that way you can see everything that you have completed within the year and previous years. So it's a really useful platform. Angela, would you like to, to add to that? Just encourage your employees also to log in and let them search and let your employees kind of see what's of interest and they can pop in a few things professionally that I want to, you know, improve. Um, one example, just for me, and I don't think that it's in the LMS, but I know that our Do It department has WebEx training. So with COVID and working remotely and understanding, you know, that remote only means your location changes. The expectation of the job doesn't change, but the automation may be increased, the use of it. And so I have a lot of user errors for myself. And so that could be a great development goal for this year or this cycle. If people aren't comfortable with presenting remotely and, and participating in WebEx from a different lo location or Zoom or all the other technical technology pieces, then that would be a great one. But just let your employees search Skillsoft and, and you know, require them to choose a couple of plan, a couple of courses or modules that would add value, not just to them, but also to the department. And in fact, we'll be presenting to employees tomorrow. And, and in terms of the, the slide presentation, it will be the exact same presentation. But we do just want to talk about the evaluation cycle from the, from the employee's perspective so that they can assist you in making it a great, strong and effective um, plan for the year and then the evaluation at the end, as Angela mentioned earlier, should not be a surprise and hopefully it's not something where people are dreading it. Um, you know, sometimes I think that's that's the concern. There's, they're maybe afraid that there'll be a surprise. So I think if you can alleviate those worries now by having the discussion and letting them know that this is how we're doing it, we'll spot check in just a couple of months and then at the end what we're doing is looking back at this performance plan to see how well you did. Did you meet the expectations? I think that then will alleviate a lot of those fears and, and some of that stress. And so for us, we use the example of training on Office 365, enrolling in a certification program. Of course, you would specify which one if you needed that in your particular area. One more time, we're going to save the draft before moving on. And then we're going to, to finish up. And so just making sure that your institutional values and individual, sorry, in, institutional goals and individual goals each add up to the 50% and that you do not have anything below a 5% and making sure that everything looks good before you, you complete. And again, you can make edits to the performance plan all the way through the mid-year review. Once you've uh, completed the mid-year review, um, you're, you're locked in, but as I said, you are able to go ahead and upload if you need to add to that. If you need to mention due to COVID, we need the business need change, so we focused on this particular project instead of that one. You can outline all of that and upload it to the system. Another area just to bring your attention to are the actions. Of course, you can print, you can save the draft, or you can complete. Always we want to save. And then it's going to show you there that the plan's been marked as complete, but you can also add progress notes if you would like to. So for, for your own sort of memory jog, or if you want to give some indication to your employee how well they're doing, you could do that as well. You just go ahead and click create progress notes. A pop-up pop box will come. And as you can see, you can indicate quite a bit of information. So for us, of course, we're a test user. It's going to be an original progress report or, or note. You'll have some options there. You're going to give it a title. And then, of course, here's very general. So you want to be a little bit more specific than doing OK. But if there's areas where, you know, maybe an employee has really excelled or really improved, 
you want to document that. You know, typically employees do really well with some positive feedback, and especially if you have to give them some feedback where there's an area of challenge. Of course, I'm sure you're already aware of giving that positive feedback first, and then just pointing out whether there may be some work to be done. And then we just go ahead and share the progress for, for note if you want to. You can add an attachment to that indicated and create the note. And then we come to this page. So in this particular one, it's a private note, but it could be a shared note, and it gives you the information so that you can uh, remember when you created that note and check it out before your mid-year review if you created the note before then. So I think it's a, a really useful feature that um, when I first started using it, I was not aware of this feature, so I was really thrilled when, when this was pointed out. And so we did just want to give you the full view. So this is, this is a view of a dashboard, and you'll have access to, to this on, on your platform as well. But this is why we don't want you to wait until the very end to complete this, because this means that you're going to be doing nine steps in a week instead of over the whole performance cycle. So this is a screenshot of mine. Of course, Angela is my supervisor. So she's to create the performance plan. And when she does that, the next step, when she hits finish up, it's going to then move to her supervisor, who's Virginia Shea. So Virginia's going to take a look at this and, and see you know, what it is that I'm going to be working on, make some suggestions, make some edits, or say, oh yeah, this looks great. And so she's going to approve. It then moves forward into my queue so that I need to acknowledge it. So I need to spend some time looking, see if there's anything I would like to add. Hopefully, you know, we had that discussion. So everything that I outlined in terms of what I thought was my need for professional development, hopefully Angela remembered to include those. So we're good to go and I just go ahead and acknowledge. And so that's kind of the overall step one. It's three parts to that first um, part of the performance plan. Then we'll move forward to the mid-year review. So I would definitely recommend that you do this um, sort of mid to late November, again, because we've we've kind of had this a short shortened cycle. And because you know we're just doing this in September instead of August, we've kind of lost a month, but hopefully you've already been working on your performance plan. So I'd highly recommend again doing this in November before we all get busy with the holidays and final exams in November, maybe plan it a little bit before that, whichever is best for your, for your timeline. But Angela's going to take a look at the mid-year review and see how I'm doing, what, what it is I'm supposed to be working on, are the milestones being met, are there some glitches maybe due to you know the COVID, we never would have imagined this a year ago if we were presenting this. So if something comes up, make those edits. But once she's okay with everything, everything looks good, she's going to click submit. And again, it comes back to my queue for me to take a look and acknowledge, and so on and so forth. So the last component, it's four parts, so steps six through nine. So Angela's gonna complete the review. So this is where she's going to put the rating. There'll be a drop down box at this point, and so she can choose from does not meet expectations, meets expectations, or exceeds for each one of those areas. So for those institutional goals that we already uh, assigned a weight to, and then those individual goals. So now I'm going to put Angela on the spot a little bit to talk about what those individual ratings means. So I think we could probably agree that um, does not meet means there's there's something in that area in that task. Perhaps a milestone was not met. Um, but I think for me in particular, the difficulty is between the meets versus exceeds. So that's probably the question that we get the most, and and Sheila probably gets them more than any of us is how do I, how am I exceeding? How do I get there? And many times um, evaluators think that because I come to work every day that I'm exceeding or because I come to work on time, I'm exceeding. If that is the expectation, then you're meeting the expectation. So an exceed example, you could come up with great examples within your divisions and departments, but you've worked on the project and you save the institution money or you um, got the project complete two months before the deadline um, or you know those are examples of, of exceeds not just attendance or behaviors or things that are expected that would be meet and there's nothing wrong with meeting expectations that's what we expect the majority of our workforce 
to be meeting expectations. But Nicolette mentioned my, my word, my rock star word. You know, many organizations, there's just a, a, a small percent of rock stars and a small percent that are not meeting expectations. So the majority, if you did a bell-shaped curve, for example, the majority of our workforce would be meeting expectations and that's what we want. But people hit it out of the park and deserve to be recognized for hitting it out of the park. So those should be very descriptive examples of what task or what goal was issued and, and you met that, exceeded that, um, save the university money or uh, reduce risk or avoided something and that could be an exceed on that goal or that particular task or project. And then when you get into the overall rating at the end of the cycle, um, it's the same thing. You know, employees, um, it, it's an emotional challenge because you're talking about me and my work. And so you are giving me a meet and I think I'm hitting it out of the park. And so that starts the two way dialogue. Let the employee lead the conversation and give you the examples of what exceeds met, meant and why that's different. And you can have that early on. Technically, our cycle began July 1 for this year and it'll run through April, March 31. Mm -hmm. So we have nine months in the cycle. And so go ahead and set that expectation and talk about it. Some employees are uncomfortable asking their leader, you know, well, how do I meet exceed? What does that mean to you? And so you should define that as the you know, leader in the unit or the leader in the division and what expectations um, we require for us to be exceeds. I don't know, that, that was a couple of few examples, Nicolette, but we get that a lot. Um, jumping to not meeting, for example, an overall rating for a not meeting should really include um, documented counseling sessions, written warnings, um, suspension or some type of discipline should happen during that period and at the end if there's an overall does not meet then you can easily go back through the progress nodes or through HR with Sheila and Nicolette and we will have those documented challenges those documented warnings of things where someone is overall not meeting and again it should not be a surprise and I think I'd just like to add to that to um, to note that if an employee receives a does not meet in any category, they cannot receive an overall rating of exceeds. So just keep that in mind. And so we're happy to take any questions now, of course, and then if there's anything that comes to mind after this, we're, we're happy to answer those questions. You can certainly reach out and give me a call and I'll put you on hold and call Angela or Sheila. <laughs> and I'll put her on the spot too. She and uh -oh. Sheila would be happy to come to mm -hmm. you departmentally or you and your unit or leaders together within your division and provide an individual session because sometimes the dynamics are different when we're not being recorded or we're with our colleagues and we know our departmental culture, so to speak, and you may want to bounce off things from one leader to another. So we're happy to facilitate a session for you and your department. Thank you very much. I just have a couple questions in the chat, Nicolette and Angela, if you're ready for those. Sure. So the first is this, will there also be a step-by-step -step documentation of this process in text form on the HR website? I can certainly put that together, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then uh, another question is, what is the URL for accessing the portal to access the performance plan? And I think someone may have uh, put that on there already. Great, so if you, if you go to our our website, the Office of Human Resources website, over on the far right. Um, I think we have a link there for you to log in to, we, we call it people admin, mm -hmm. but log in to the software, but we'll send that out to also Dr. Hicks um, so people can make that maybe a, a, a bookmark or a favorite on, on their site. We'll send you that as well. Thank you. Yes, someone did post up a URL and that might be the one that uh, that people are looking for. Okay, great. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the participants? I 
I know too that you'll be speaking tomorrow with this presentation for employees as well. So please do, uh, if you're here joining us today as a supervisor, please do encourage your colleagues to join tomorrow's presentation, the same place on Miko's WebEx room at the same time, 3.30. There are no other questions. Uh, we'll begin to wrap up. We can't thank you, Dr. Hicks and Dr. Nino, we, uh, Nicolette, Dr. Campos. We just thank all of you for helping support us with this virtual opportunity and continuing to mitigate safely with with COVID and this pandemic. And we're a phone call away, an email away. Just let us know we're we're here and ready to provide assistance because we. Even though sometimes it can be a painful process, we want to help you work through it. I want to say thank you to HR as well. Um, we're trying something different this year and working together with online learning and ARC Accessibility Resource Center, Teaching and Learning Center, and we're trying to become a one stop sort of hub with HR for faculty and staff professional growth and career development. So as you, if you're interested in learning about future sessions, please go to the faculty and staff link off of the homepage on uncp.edu and you'll see all of our sessions as they're all coming together and we're sharing those for the whole campus employee community. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Hicks. We're happy to give you back some time in your afternoons. <laughs> hey, these days go by fast. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.